Hello, I want to introduce you to Everett guitar number 805. This is just this wonderful guitar. Um, I have so much to tell you about it, I don't know where to begin. Uh, let me start with just the basic uh, uh, shape in the guitar itself. It's uh, my Grand Concert shape, which I call my L model, it's, which means it's 15 and 5 8 cents across the lower bout. It's a 25 inch scale fingerboard. Um, so it's a slightly shorter fingerboard than what a scale length fingerboard than you might be used to. Uh, you, you won't notice it tonally, you're just going to notice it feels, uh, uh, it feels great. Uh, one and three quarters at the nut, two and a quarter spacing at the bridge. Uh, pretty standard uh, for modern day guitars, which makes it very versatile for finger style. You can get in, in between the strings with your fingers. Uh, for flat picking, your fingers don't climb up on top of each other. A uh, relatively flat fingerboard, very low action. Uh, medium high frets, all the stuff that it, you know that people tend to want that I personally like. Um, the uh, one of the, the first thing you're going to notice, of course, is the wood on the top. This is beautiful Australian black wood, highly figured, which matches the the wood on the sides and matches the wood on the back. So, also you're going to notice the petite bouche or the small sound hole, uh, very Selmer style. Uh, if you look at the photos at the website, you're going to notice uh, the detail of that. There's a little step and multiple uh, woods are used. And the beard seal style uh, sound ports on the side of the uh, guitar. I asked Alan if it'd be okay if I could do this. He's the first guy I know who did these two large sound ports on the side. Uh, Minor, different shape, different location. The bracing is different. The neck joint is different. Da -da. But he's the first guy I know that did these sound ports like this. So. Uh, they're the Beardsville style sound ports. Now what this does, I wanted to use uh, a uh, hardwood top on the guitar. Uh, I really wanted to use the Flame Koa, but I couldn't find any because there's a large guitar manufacturer in California whose name starts with a T and ends in an R who had all of the Flame Koa that I, at that time that I could find. The stuff I was finding that was being called high flame was not high flame, but this stuff is just out of sight. This reminds me of the, the virgin growth uh, um, koa you used to get in Hawaii. I did the dark and the tight flame. It's just, it's just beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, I had used the Australian blackwood in the past on guitars for the back and sides, and I really like the way it sounded. It's sort of a halfway step between koa and, uh, and rosewood, and I really thought it would make a nice sounding uh, uh, hardwood top. So here it is, the Australian. You know, hardwood top. It's probably the first person, I'm, I may very well be the first person to uh, do it. Uh, the bracing is slightly different to accommodate the fact that it's a, a hardwood top. The bridge is slightly larger. Um, I've had this guitar on hand for three years now and you can see by the reflection uh, from the light overhead that it's absolutely flat, stable, uh, the tone is stable, it's just just spectacular the guitar. I'm very happy with it. Um, Build it for the Woodstock Invitational show. I gotta explain why I've had it three years. Usually my guitars don't stay around this long. Uh, I had some health issues pop up. I had other bigger issues to deal with. So this has just been something I've kept around for me to enjoy playing. But now it's time for it to find its, its proper home. Uh, see, it's a five-piece neck with the uh, mahogany, Spanish cedar, walnut strips, uh, which I thought the walnut covered the uh, matched the color of the the Australian blackwood nicely. Uh, has a, a figured uh, mahogany veneer on the back of the uh, uh, peghead, uh, the Everett uh, logo, you know, the usual stuff for my guitars. Um, the neck is actually satin instead of gloss. It's a gloss finish that was sanded to 2000 grit sandpaper. Uh, so as you play it, you'll buff a gloss into it. But what that does, it gives you a nice kind of a powdery, smooth feel. It's just a delight to play. It has a cutaway, it's a 12 fret body joint. What I like about that is it moves your left hand in closer to the body. Uh, that little bit can make a big difference when it comes to your shoulder uh, for us older guitar players or, or just different body builds. I, I just happen to like the 12 fret body joint. But then uh, the cutaway and the bevel in the cutaway uh, give you access to that all important G uh, area at the top of the, the fingerboard. Um, oh, I have, uh, this guitar started out with Mother of Pearl uh, side position dots, and I just didn't like it. I, I couldn't get them to look right. Um, I, the Mother of Pearl didn't work with it. It's such a wooden guitar, and with no inlays on it other than the logo at the top, I just couldn't make it work. So I tried different size, a tortoise shell, um, a faux tortoise shell. We didn't hurt, harm any tortoise, uh, tortoises doing this. <laughs> 
but I, I cut some uh, uh, different size tortoiseshell uh, dots for the side of the fingerboard, and this I did several of them. Here's the, the, the final version, which they're large enough where you can see them in a, a, a low light situation. Um, I, I'm very happy with those as well. So, so it has uh, uh, torrified maple uh, body binding, and any of you who worked with torrified maple know it's very hard to bend, but it makes binding all right. It's a hassle, but I wanted to get. Uh, you can you could do this with stain, but it's really not the same. I wanted the, uh, the the hue of the binding to work well with the hue of the wood, and it's uh, it did. Um, it has spalted maple uh, arm bevel and has a spalted maple rib bevel. Um, go to a 510 tuners. A lot of photos at the website, so if you want to see the details. And there's a beautiful scene on the inside that uh, at the end of the little video, I'll, I'll punch on a, a photo of it. Um, it's a figured cherry. And I thought the cherry looked sort of like the mountain scene out the front of our house. So we painted in mountains along the bottom and the top of the cherry uh, emulates a sunset. And so there's a little strip of this artwork uh, on the inside of the guitars. We have these big holes. You're gonna be looking in the big holes, so why not put something fun on the inside to, uh, to enjoy looking at, so. But anyway, here it is, uh, Everett Guitar number 805. I know there's a lot more to tell you, but this video is already getting a little long. And, and uh, uh, anyway, I just wanted you to see it, hear it. Hopefully one day you'll be able to put it on your knee yourself and check it out. So thanks a lot.